I call to order the City of Gladstone Budget Committee meeting for May 3rd, 2021 at 6.32 p.m. Per the Governor's Executive Order 20-16 regarding compliance with Oregon's public meeting laws, the City of Gladstone is abiding by social distancing requirements during the coronavirus pandemic. This meeting will be conducted using the Zoom platform. The Zoom access instructions can be found on the meeting agenda. Members of the committee, staff, and the public all have access to this meeting. So we're going to start with self-introductions. Um, I'll go ahead and start. Mayor Tammy Stemple. Um, Tracy, you're next on the screen. Hi there. Tracy Todd, City Council. All right. Anessa? Hello, City Council. Anessa Hartman. Greg? Greg Alexander, City Council. Randy? Randy, you're muted. All right, we'll come back. Uh, Matt? Hi, Matt Tracy, City Council. All right, Riley? Riley Hartman, Budget Committee. Michael? Michael Milch, Lay Member, Budget Committee. Sierra? Sierra Cook, uh, Lay Member, Budget Committee. Mindy? Mindy Garlington, City Council. Neil. Neil Reisner, Budget Committee. And then we have a whole bunch of people in the council chamber. Staff, could you introduce yourselves, please? Hi, I'm Jackie Bett, City Administrator. Hi, I'm John Schmerber, Chief of Police. Good evening, Rick Huffman, uh, Fire Chief. Karen Canaparoli, Acting Public Works Director. Kathy Brecker, Finance Consultant. Great, thank you. Um, we are missing two people. It looks like um, Christy Haller Schaefer and Tanaya Neff. And I just want to check one more time that they're not trying to get in. I do not see them on here unless one of them needs to raise their hand indicating that's them as an attendee. Okay. Do we have many attendees? We currently have three. Three. Okay. I don't recognize the name. Okay. Um, so the first item is the appointment of a budget committee chair and vice chair. So I would um, open be open for any nominations. Everybody's muted. I don't see any nominations. All right, it's really not a scary position other than you have to run the meeting. Um, and the person I was gonna nominate isn't actually on the phone call, Tracy. Um, I'd like to nominate Michael Milch, please. All right, we have another nomination. I don't see any, so Michael, is it something you would like to do? Yeah, I've chaired the uh, city schools budget committee the last couple of years and would be happy to do it again. Um, and it'll, it'll probably tend to keep me a little quieter if I just uh, preside over the meeting. So that's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, since we don't have Tammy doing a roll call vote, I'll go ahead and just call each person individually. I'm a yes for Councillor My or for Michael Milch. Tracy? Yes. Councillor Hartman? Yes. Councillor Alexander? You're muted. Yes. Councillor Ripley. Councillor Ripley, is your volume not turned on? Uh, I don't think his volume's working. Okay. I wonder if there's a way that we could hold up a sign that says, turn your volume on. Okay. Councillor Tracy. Yes. Mr. Hartman. Yes. Mr. Milch? Yes. Ms. Cook? Yes. Councilor Garlington? Yes. Mr. Reisner? Yes. All right, Michael, you are the chair. So then you get to take it from here and get a vice chair. All right, uh, let's see. Something is trying to update on my computer. Let me get that off so I can see the screen again. Um, I will uh, entertain nominations for vice chair of the budget committee. Um, I'm here tonight. I will plan to preside tonight, but if we do have to have a second or third budget committee meeting, this person could preside in my absence in that case. 
Uh, so are there any nominations for vice chair? Mayor Stemple? Bill Reisner. All right, Brianna Reisner has been nominated. Are there other nominations? All right, we'll do what we did before. We'll go around. Um, I will call the names in the order that I see them on my screen. Um, so it may be a little different. Um, Tracy Todd? Yes. Uh, Matt Tracy? Yes. Anessa Hartman? Yes. Greg Alexander? Yes. Tammy Stemple? Yes. Riley Hartman? Yes. Sierra Cook? Yes. Mindy Garlington? Yes. Neil Reisner? Yes, thank you. Uh, Randy Ripley? I think he may still try to be reconnected. I don't see his video now. But I believe we have a majority vote. So uh, Neil Reisner is elected vice chair of the budget committee. Um, the uh, city recorder will serve as secretary. Is Tammy Stemple, I mean, Tammy Bannock um, present tonight? I don't see yes. her on the screen. Yes, I am. Okay, very good. So you're serving as secretary. So that's taken care of. Um, and just uh, this is done in the webinar format, which means that the budget committee themselves and selected city staff are participants in the meeting. Um, other members of the public are here and have the right to speak at the time of uh, public comment, um, but they will have to be recognized at that time by the person uh, operating the Zoom meeting. So just be aware of that. Uh, generally, we adhere to a three minute time limit for uh, comments from members of the public who aren't on the budget committee. Um, it, can I ask, is the city attorney present tonight? No. Um, I have a question. Um, I think that some of the stuff that came out on this meeting said that in a 14 member budget committee, uh, eight people would constitute a majority of the committee. Uh, and that's what's required for a majority vote. However, we have a 13 member budget committee because we have six lay people and uh, seven city councilors. Does that mean that seven votes will constitute a majority or do we ignore the, um, the fact that we have a vacancy and still consider it eight? Seven, it's seven is a majority of the 13. Okay, all right. So just, uh, so in case that came up in the future or later tonight, I want that clear from the beginning. Um, and we have fewer than uh, 13 present tonight, which means that even with some people absent, we still need seven votes to pass um, any, any action. That's correct. Okay. So um, we begin with a discussion of the 2021 budget, uh, which would be include the city budget message, financial analysis and department presentations. So I will turn that over to staff to make that, uh, that introduction. Thank you, Chair Milch. I believe that we need to have the public comment first on the agenda. All right, I have that on there. Um, so we begin with some public comment prior to presentation of anything about the budget, is that correct? It's anything but the budget. Public comment is for anybody to talk if it doesn't have anything to do with what's on the agenda. Okay, all right. Uh, Tammy Baddock, I will ask you, um, do you know if there are any members of the public present who would like to comment at the beginning of the meeting in this, in this part uh, on matters that don't have to do with the budget? Chair Milch, I did not receive any requests to speak at tonight's meeting. Okay, so um, uh, Administrator Betts, do you think we can move on to the next section then? Yes, we can. Okay. All right, I'm calling on you and the staff uh, to uh, proceed from here. Thank you. So as Chair Milch um, reiterated tonight, you're first going to hear the city budget message. Then we're gonna give a brief financial analysis and do our department presentations. So with that, to the honorable mayor, members of the Gladstone City Council, citizen members of the budget committee and citizens of the city of Gladstone. 
After an astounding year that included an unprecedented global pandemic and devastating natural disasters, the city of Gladstone is hopeful and wary of what a new year will bring. Preparing a budget for a full service city has its share of unknowns as we continue to work our way out of the pandemic. And it is impossible to anticipate the depth or duration of the economic impacts. Yet with the city of Gladstone's conservative approach to budgeting, we remain positive and full of desire to achieve. It is my pleasure to present for your consideration a balanced budget of $53,551,917 for the fiscal years 2021 through 2023 biennial budget, which is a decrease of 0.74% from the previous biennial budget. The decrease is attributable to the completion of the Civic Center construction offset by cost of living adjustments throughout all categories of the budget. The purpose of the budget message is to introduce the proposed budget, supply a brief overview of the docu document and how it will address the city council's goals with city resources over the coming biennium. The 2021-23 proposed budget for the city of Gladstone is, as required by Oregon law, the most important document of the city. It sets standards and establishes an action, operational and financial plan for the delivery of city services. The budget document is organized into 11 funds and accounts for 18 programs. In addition to the Urban Renewal Agency that publishes a separate budget. It is important for citizens to understand that revenue sources are tied to specific expenditures and can only be used for their prescribed purpose. Each fund is designed to separate transactions in compliance with a specific program and to assist in the management of public dollars. Dollars cannot be moved between funds without the proper budgetary appropriations. The city's finance consultant prepared the document under the guidance of myself with the collaboration of the excellent management team that includes the police chief, fire chief, acting public works director, human resources consultant, and city recorder. We have spent considerable time preparing the budget, utilizing the most accurate information available to predict revenues and expenditures for the next two years. In regards to the City Council goals for 21-23, the City Council held a goal setting session in January and goals were incorporated into our work plan for the next two years. They build off a successful past couple years and the momentum will carry us into the next biennium. These goals are identified in the budget document. Some 2021-23 proposed highlights. The city's permanent tax rate continues to be 4.8174 per thousand. The city is collecting the full permanent levy amount and we are optimistic revenues will remain steady. Changes in personnel that have been incorporated are discussed below. The budget highlights include our proudest accomplishments accomplishment is the completion of the new Gladstone Civic Center located on Portland Avenue. The Gladstone Civic Center is the new home for the police department and city hall built on a two acre vacant site that is next to the city's public works facility. The building is safer, built to comply with and surpass up to date earthquake standards. Gladstone residents should feel safer knowing their police department and emergency services can continue to operate in case of a major seismic event. The Civic Center is the city's first building to be constructed using the streamlined progressive design build approach under which the design build team is fully responsible for delivering the project on time and on budget. The funding for the building was from the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency, along with full faith and credit notes and cash reserves. No additional property tax dollars were required. 
The project cost $13.5 million, and we moved in on time and within budget. Now that project has been completed, the Gladstone Civic Center will require time and money to maintain and keep it operating efficiently. The budget also assumes $250,000 per year in revenue in the parks budget for the Meldrum Bar parking fee. The City Council will consider implementing the fee at their May 11th City Council meeting. This budget also sustains current service levels for the Gladstone Fire Department, which includes fully funding the two captains positions from the general fund that were previously added with funds from the Federal Staffing for Adequate Fire and Emergency Response Grants, known as the SAFER Grant. The current structure of fire services is not sustainable in the long term and staff will be exploring options to recommend to the City Council. Clackamas County assumed responsibility for the Gladstone Public Library, including all expenses and the construction of the new building. The City contributes annually from the general fund revenues at approximately $200,000 per year plus inflation, and these payments are reflected in the proposed budget. The proposed budget includes 54.89 full-time employees, known as FTEs. The FTE counts are based on the first year of the biennial budget and individual budget detail has the breakdown. The counts are also based upon the departmental allocation of each employee, which accounts for slight differences between fiscal years. Within the Public Works Department, new positions have been incorporated that will be split amongst parks, roads and streets, sewer, water and stormwater. These positions amount to three full-time employees and will be added incrementally between the two years of the biennium. Within administration in the second year, the city will bring on a full-time human resources manager position increased from a part-time contracted position. With the transfer of fire marshal services to Clackamas County and the elimination of a part-time position in the fire levy, an executive assistant position has been created in the Gladstone Fire Department with no new fiscal impacts to the budget. Due to unknown reopening plans, the senior center manager position has been eliminated and the funds are in contingency until plans are determined on how they will be allocated. The city now has three collective bargaining agreements. The International Association of Firefighters Local 1159, which expires June 30th, 2023. Gladstone Police Association, which expires June 30th, 2022 and the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, known as AFSME, Local 35003, expires June 30, 2022. It is the city's intent to try and negotiate a one-year rollover with the Gladstone Police Association and AFSME to align all three agreements with the same expiration date and make them parallel with the city's budget. Labor expenses driven by increasing costs associated with the retirement benefits, specifically the Public Employees Retirement System known as PERS, are expected to increase for the next several years. The biennium increase is relatively small, but is expected to accelerate in the future. For Gladstone, the actuary increase is an average of 1.22 percentage points to the previous rate or a 5.91% overall increase. A cost of living increase of an average of 2.5% has been factored into salary calculations. Fortunately, other payroll related benefits have remained relatively stable. This year's general fund unappropriated ending fund balance before reserves is $628,731 and including a minimum contingency reserve of $400,000, the final ending fund balance is 
$28,731. The city strives to maintain a healthy general fund ending fund balance of 10% of general fund unreserved revenues at a minimum, which is $714,044. This is determined by the city's financial policy. In order to be financially stable through December for the following fiscal year before property taxes are received. We recommend the city prepare a five-year long-range financial plan, including a capital improvement plan in the next biennium to monitor the fiscal health of the city, in addition to the progress we make each year in attaining and maintaining the fund balance targets. Due to the pandemic, we were not able to complete this, but it is still of importance. With the passage of the 1.9 trillion federal, federal stimulus package, local governments will be recipients of direct distribution funds. Gladstone's allocation will be approximately 2.512 million. It will be available for revenue replacement to provide essential government services. However, we need to wait until we receive the formal award notice and the federal and state guidelines are in place to strategize the usefulness of the funds. They will be included in the approved budget as presented to the city council in June. And finally, we wanna thank the elected officials and the city employees for your unwavering perseverance. Your positivity carries us through the toughest times and the Gladstone community has prevailed through adversity. Thank you very much. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to our financial consultant, Kathy Brucker, to give you a financial analysis. Yes, I'd like to, thank you, Jackie. I'd like to walk you through the first two sections of the budget, along with some financial information that was sent out last Thursday. You received a pie chart breakdown of the general fund departments for the current and proposed budgets. This was requested for committee reference during the general fund discussions. And secondly, you also received an analysis of the budgetary beginning fund balances actual and estimated for FY16 and through FY2122. It is important to note that almost every fiscal year shows an increase and the effects of the utility rate increases are evident in FY19, 20 and 2021. And the increase to the utilities fund balances will allow the city to start the much needed infrastructure improvements projects. So as we move into the introduction section, past Jackie's uh, message, the budget calendar is on page five and it details out the rest of the budget adoption process. Should another meeting be needed after tonight, it will be noticed next week and then held on May 17th, 2021. The council is scheduled to adopt the approved budget on June 22, 2021. The final legal date for that is June 30th to comply with Oregon budget law. The budget user guide following the calendar and the uh, goals of the council, the um, guide provides much of the very same information that was discussed at the budget orientation meeting on March 29th. Moving into the budget summary section, <clears throat> Page 17 details all the revenues received within the city by category. And as noted, charges for services and local taxes are the largest revenue sources the city receives. Our major revenues consist of the local taxes, which are property taxes, transient lodging taxes, and vehicle registration taxes. Property taxes include the general fund base rate of 4.8174 per thousand plus a 3.5% increase annually for inflation and growth and statutorily permitted, and also the levy taxes for the police and fire services. All collections are budgeted at 95% of the levy amount for each fiscal year. Transient lodging tax is a 6% for the lodging stays under 30 days and took a very significant hit this past year with the pandemic. It is expected to recover fairly quickly over the next biennium. 
The city has the two hotels and then several short-term rentals within our boundaries. Library district revenues appear in the historical, but have all been transferred to Clackamas County as of December 1, 2019, with the transfer of the library to county management. Vehicle registration tax began during this current biennium, and it's a helpful source of revenue for the roads and streets fund. The state shared revenues, commonly referred to as the SIN taxes, are provided based on state developed formulas, mainly population based. And these will be discussed further with the public hearing on the state shared revenues later on. Charges for services applies in the general fund, but are mostly impactful in the utility funds. After two years of significant increases, future revenues are budgeted at inflationary increases only for this proposed biennium. In grants, the city was very fortunate to receive a few small grants, plus the large coronavirus relief fund grant through, from the feds through the state of 384,000 that helped offset the COVID-19 costs of the city. This grant will be fully expended by June 30th, 2020. We have, as Jackie had mentioned, we have been notified we will receive in two installments, the American Rescue Plan grant, estimated at um, just over two and a half million. To date, there's been no definitive guidance issued as to exactly what this may be used for, but we do know revenue replacement will be allowed. That'll be the first use of these funds to help recover back into fund balance our lost revenues. Though not within this proposed document, this grant will be part of the approval uh, motion made tonight and rolled in with the approved budget version taken to the city council. On page 22 at the end of the budget summary section, it uh, details the expenditure category, expenditure summary by category for, for all funds. Some of the notable items are the personnel services increased by 11.82 over the current biennium due to shift from some key contract positions to personnel status, and then the previously mentioned new FTEs we will be bringing on. PERS has a small increase overall for the biennium, but has came in much lower than the previous biennium, which was wonderful as far as the percent of increase but the future will depend much on the ongoing interest earnings and any legislative decisions that are made. Payroll benefits have stayed relatively static with an increase of 4.3% overall, including the PERS. Materials and services have stayed within inflationary increase, increases, basically 2.14% overall. And then as mentioned earlier, funds are accumulating within capital outlay for reserves for equipment and vehicle replacement and infrastructure improvements. Transfers out reflect the broadening of our cost allocation model to include both administration and information technology departments. These disbursements will allow recovery into the general fund of costs that are citywide related. Are there any questions on these sections? Nope, don't appear to be. Okay, the next section goes into the general fund. And just to mention, it's leading off with the general fund revenues. These have been conservatively estimated due to the uncertainties left in the health of the economy. And with that, I'll turn it back to Jackie to start the departmental discussions. Okay, so if everybody would turn to page 28 in your packet, I'm going to lead off with talking about administration expenditures the administration department also contains the functions of the city council, financial services, customer service, human resources and risk management, records management and planning services. Some of the budget highlights that we'd like to call out is that for us, the major focus is to return to the pre-COVID operations citywide as allowed by federal, state and county officials. We also are prioritizing and taking the next steps on the city's community development initiatives, which include implementing the city's downtown revitalization plan, completing the housing code audit, completing the community engagement strategy, and to complete the charter review process. 
If you look on page 29, there are a couple of line items that typically we don't get into the weeds with, but I wanted to call out some projects that we're working on so you know what those funds are, are going towards. The first one is contractual and professional services. That is for one year to continue the HR as a contract and the second year we are bringing that in in house. We also take our transcriptionists out of there and there are miscellaneous contractual services that come up throughout the year that generally come out of that line item. Outside agency requests, there's $47,000 allocated for two years. What that is, is the partnership that the city has with the school district to do the community schools program. Due to the pandemic, we have not done it for the last two years, but we have budgeted for that again, and it's a topic we would like to explore with the school <coughs> district. The city also contracts out for its planning services, so that's pretty self-explanatory. The next line item is community promotions business development. This is where the revenue from the business licenses come to, and the city keeps a portion of that to go back into certain projects. Specifically, what we have budgeted in that line item is to complete the second phase of the Trolley Trail Bridge project, which is $147,000. And also to do the housing code rewrite, which is gonna be between 85 to $100,000. So that depletes that line item fairly quickly. That's also the line item that we retain John Southgate Consulting to do economic development work for us. And the last line item I wanted to call attention to you is the tours and promotion activities. The revenues have gone down. We're expecting about 39,000 each year. And we would like to put a small committee together this summer to talk about where these remaining funds should be spent in accordance with the new tourism strategy that we just completed in the last biennium budget. The administration includes the city administrator, city recorder, part-time HR, human resources, an admin assistant, a point eight FTE of a finance director, accounting clerk, utility billing clerk, and it also covers any of the expenses for the city council. Is there any questions on administration? Okay. We'll move on to page 30, information technology expenditures. <clears throat> this used to be an administration. It was formally housed within our budget, but moved to a separate department during the last biennium budget. The city also hired a IT manager position, and we just created a cost allocation plan for this biennium that I'll have Kathy talk a little bit more about. Yes, we're... Um we had created the cost allocation plan for IT. We started it with the last biennium, but we have expanded it tremendously this biennium as far as uh, more inclusive of all costs necessary. We've also expanded our cost allocation plan to administration too. As I was saying earlier, it, it allows the general fund to recover costs that are borne citywide. And uh, what we also have done within the information technology is we started a hardware replacement cycle. So we are reserving funds every single year for our computer and equipment reserve and to be able to maintain um, an ongoing cycle there. And uh, the last thing that we made a change on with IT this year was moving all of the cell phone inf um, acquisitions and control of and billings, et cetera, into the IT department from the other department so that he could more or less have a more holistic balance on monitoring everything. And that's, those are the big ones. So we have an inventory of where all of our technology and infrastructure items need to be. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to our acting public works director to talk about facilities. I had a question on the IT piece, Yes, if I could, please. Um, uh, account code 500210, computer technology service. 
what is that? Because now we have an IT person. Is this contracting people to help him? Mm -hmm. There is a very small amount in there that would be contracting people to help, help him. It is largely all of our uh, software leases and any software requirements that we have within the city, you know, our licensing, our rent, uh, excuse me, annual costs, et cetera, of all licensing and information. Tyler Technologies is a big one in there, and you know, we must pay um, for support and licensing every single year. So it is all monitored within IT. Okay, and thank you. And when we say a small amount to back up our IT manager, I believe it's not to exceed $10,000. And that's in case he's not here or we have an emergency that we've got a backup company that can come in and take care of our infrastructure. Mayor, this Councilor Tracy, weren't you asking about the computer technology service appropriations line or were you asking about the contract appropriations line? No, nope, the computer technology service line, yes. Yeah, and that, that yeah. wasn't. I apologize. Uh, the $10,000 for the backup IT service is in the line above a contract, um, contracts and contractual and professional services. So it's not part of the computer technology service. Okay, thank you. Okay, Darren. All right, thank you, Jackie. <clears throat> so facilities, there's a few note noteworthy items I wanted to, to touch on. Uh, one of them being uh, we implemented uh, bi-weekly facility inspections at all locations. We did this to be more proactive than reactive. Uh, with the new civic building coming on, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to maintain our facilities, facilities not just the uh, civic building. Um, another thing that we're doing is developing maintenance standards for all our buildings. This will help us maintain our buildings at a high level with less downtime and again, more proactive than reactive. I wanted to touch on page 33. If you look at contractual <clears throat> professional services and operation and maintenance and repair, both those line items have gone up uh, compared to the prior years. A lot of that is with the addition of the new civic building. Another line item I'd like to point out is um, under capital outlay, the facility improvements line item. There's, um, where am I at? Under capital outlay. Okay, yes. So this was um, put in place to, um, to help build the, the new public works facility. The prior year was 250,000 and we put in money going forward to uh, build a new public works facility if it, if it doesn't end up going out to the voters uh, in the future. So that, two, that 250,000 that's in the budget, it, it's 195. Correct. There, actually the 250 that was budgeted in the previous biennium, there was approximately uh, what, that 45,000 that was actually, or, 55,000 that was actually spent. So we rolled forward the 195, and then we added an additional 125 in the next fiscal year for the total of the 320. So if we refer this to a voters in November and it does not pass, we have monies available to do facility improvements on site. Right. Correct. Correct. If it does pass, we can use this money towards the debt service payment if we choose. We can, or it can be absorbed uh, back absorbed into back the budget. Into the general fund okay. for other so days. we wanted to make sure that yes. you understood those options. Any questions with facilities? I have a question. Can you talk about the difference between building repair and facility improvements. And then building repair was budgeted at 47,000 in the past and now is down to 20. Is that money being utilized elsewhere or come from somewhere else? So the 47,000 was budgeted for repairs at the existing public works building. Ah. Um, and that's where that number came from. So 
the following year we've got to, we put some money in there for any accidental repairs or anything that would be out of the normal. So it's it's more that there's a brand new building, so less repairs. Is that am I getting that? Well, the original forty seven was for um, public works uh, repairs outside of the main building, and then we budgeted another twenty thousand to help keep up on any other repairs uh, within the facilities there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess my real question is, is 27 or 20,000 going to be enough? Yeah, it should be more than enough really with the 47,000 that we had budgeted last year, we took care of a lot of the issues um, okay. that needed to be done. So we just want to, you know, with it being an older facility and having issues as any older building will have, we need to have something there to be able to make uh, more costly repairs. Sure. Yeah, I know some of this is crystal ball kind of guesswork. So I just, if 20 is enough, 20 is enough. I have a question also, if I may. In regards to uh, facilities expenditures or this um, area, does this just cover public works or is this all for all of the facilities? No, this budget covers all of the facilities. The only line item that covers um, public works would be the facility improvements under capital outlay. Thank you. Good questions. Okay, municipal court. So the min, we're lucky in Gladstone to have our own municipal court and it functions to provide the judicial branch of city government. Some budget highlights is we continue purging documents that have exceeded the Oregon records retention schedule. And we are exporting information to the Department of Motor Vehicles. We are going to be in the process of hiring a new judge. And we have not had any jury trials uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. One thing that we've kept the city council informed of this past year is the loss of revenue from the pandemic. Um, it's twofold. One, officers weren't out writing as many tickets and we weren't fully staffed in the police department. And two, we weren't holding court to hold the people um, accountable for their fines. And so we did a municipal court course correction plan last year. Uh, the police chief is now fully staffed. He's down one. He'll tell you about that when we get to his department. But we've increased the activity in the police department. The police chief and I met with the city prosecutor. We also met with the former judge to, under to understand the philosophy on dismissal of cases we recommended quarterly meetings with the mayor, council president, and city administrator to discuss courtroom activity. The court administrator, or excuse, yeah, court administrator worked aggressively with our collections agency to increase the collection rate through our amnesty program. And we had a job share arrangement with the court clerk position at Oregon City for about five months. So we feel pretty confident that we've turned the corner, we've pivoted and that the revenues will start increasing with the combination of more police officers, a new judge, and really trying to get aggressive with collecting our fines that are already in collections. So with that, are there any questions about municipal court? Yes, Mayor. Mayor, you're muted. Sorry, I would have just kept on going. Um, under salaries, it shows an increase of 34,000, but we're maintaining the same two FTEs. Is there, are we missing something? Is there somebody else that's gonna be slid in as an FTE or a partial FTE? We had uh, our court administrator did not uh, work a full-time a full full time position in the previous biennium both year, okay. so that's and why it, it is showing less. Okay, thank you. It's for one court administrator, a court clerk, and the associated costs with that. Okay, 
and they'll be full time from now on. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now I'll hand it over to our police chief, John Schmerber. Oh, I have a quick question. Sierra, I have a okay. question. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is, and I apologize if I missed something. This is my first time hearing about an amnesty program. Um, can you explain a little bit more about that? And specifically, um, you know, you mentioned that we've gotten a little more aggressive with collections. Can you expand on that a little bit? So the high level with an amnesty program is to try to encourage people that have a lot of money in collections to give them an incentive to pay some of it. And so let's say you have $30,000 that you owe the city in fines. An amnesty program says, if you pay half of that, we'll forgive the other half. And we've gotten a really good response for people that have wanted to clear the slate. And so it, it's really forgiving half of the collections that they owe. And it benefits the city because then the collection company's not taking a percentage of that from us either. It is really successful. We try to do it before the holidays as well um, because we see that a lot of people take advantage of that. Awesome, thanks for explaining. You're welcome. Chief Schmerber. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you uh, for this opportunity. Uh, first, I'd like to, if you look at page 36 and 37, uh, there's a couple typos on each page where it says 2019, 2020, Northworthy items. And also on the uh, page 37 at the same, it should read 2019, 2021 on 36 and 2021, 2023. Uh, on uh, page 37. So I just wanted to clear that up before uh, we went any further. Um, thank you again. As many of you know, uh, some of the goals, of what, the goals of the uh, Gladstone Police Department is enhance the quality of life, strengthen our neighborhoods and deliver services through professional respect and commitment to our excellence. At the end of the day, we are committed to protecting the lives of our community members and anybody visiting our communities. And, and to show that a little bit, I'd like to touch a little bit on some Northworthy items from the last biennium. Um, one is, you know, having implemented to achieve these goals, we've implemented a strategic plan. And that was just the internal portion and established goals and priorities is to support those, uh, that mission. Uh, we've also uh, established a more uh, greater presence on social media and through our communications and monthly reports. Uh, one of our big, one another biggest achievement is transitioning into a new police department. And uh, another one is we've really started uh, developing a, a succession plan for the Gladstone Police Department internally um, to, to look at promoting in the future uh, more internal candidates and, and growing them in and getting them engulfed in our culture and the way we do business. Looking at uh, 2021, 2023 highlights that, uh, and we'll get to the budget right after this, the numbers. Uh, some of the things that uh, priorities that we have is the emergency management, working in conjunction with the fire chief, um, the outreach that we want to accomplish and self-reliance in our community is, is very important. And we've had meetings with volunteer groups in the community already, and we've already started establishing those programs. and developing that plan. So if, if we get, unfortunately, have another high fire season or ice storms, um, although I thought we, were, we did fairly well as a community, everybody came together, I think um, we can always do better. That's, that's kind of my stance. We can always get better and always look for ways to get better. Um, complete the uh, uh, Oregon Accreditation Alliance. Well, we got through that pretty quick because, um, I think that uh, we'll be looking we'll be looking at formalizing that this week. Uh, prepare and complete a curriculum for a citizens academy and implement when COVID restrictions are lifted. To me, this is an extremely important goal uh, to get a, for for our community members to get a better understanding of what goes on in their police department and how we actually do business, and and introducing and meeting our officers. Um, and continue working with our strategic plan with an emphasis of. Um, um, involving community, resiliency, specialized training with focus, and the biggest focus is on communication, communication and de-escalation encompassing in all our tactics. 
we started the implementation of volunteer uh, program neighbors helping neighbors, but we want, really want to push that out bigger and wider now. And uh, we'll always want to increase our uh, GPD's media strategy. We'll always want to do that. And we have some different ideas already for that. And creation of a landlord tenant forum to help to help some of our renters and apartment complex managers and maybe get them some resources with pro bono attorneys coming in for meetings and, and hold some training. So as COVID lifts, uh, our training room or the community room was a great opportunity. And finally, um, uh, we want to fill a, we're going to fill a vacant position um, that was held due to COVID uh, of a police officer position to bring it now back to 20.5 FTE in the police department to include, that includes the levy and general fund positions. Um, we held that because we were unsure and we didn't want to hire somebody to lay somebody off in the event something wrong happened with the budget. So I'm not. Nothing just... wrong would ever happen. <laughs> <laughs> so. <clears throat> Anyhow, as we look on page 38, uh, I do want to I do want to uh, talk about a couple line items. Um, one is uh, contractual services, and the other one is the operational supplies and equipment. You'll notice the previous biennium um, they were kind of switched. One was very high, the other one was very low. Throughout these last two years or almost two years now, um, we're trying to align the contractual services and operational supplies correctly, at least in our view in the police department. So a lot of that is just switched money. It's, it's, it's just kind of transferred over to some higher expenses and, and uh, contractual services. But for the most part, it's, we've just tried to adjust it and move money around to get it in, a, in the appropriate line item. So you'll see that. Also at the end, if, if uh, and for me, I'll, I'll, as my mind works with the budget is, I think the ending, ending balance there where it says $837,000 as ending. And then for the previous biennium, 682,700. I looked at that as I, I was gonna say that uh, it's essentially a, the same budget as the previous biennium. But if you look at those numbers, it's a little misleading. We took um, some of the share cost for CECOM, which is our dispatch center, and moved it from the first year of the levy into the general fund. So really the, the budget increase uh, is really showing that with the exception of some inflation in the other programs. Um, so that's what, um, I know that looks like a big jump, but if you take that out and subtract that from, the, from that 837,000, you'll find we're, pretty, we're in line still with the uh, last year's binding and budget. And I think we'd do very well with that. You see that right? Those are the really the, the things I'd like to point out uh, that I thought maybe would have stayed, uh, stood out for the uh, budget committee. And if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to try and answer them for you. I just had one quick question. Um, you said yes. Um, and it's more of clarification on what Park Patrol does. <laughs> oh, no, no problem. Uh, the Oregon, Oregon Patrol is Parks Patrol. They patrol from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Um, and they're the ones that you'll see uh, private security at the Meldrum Bar. Uh, though, and would they focus on cross, Meldrum Bar, Cross, cross Park, and, and High Rocks. Um, that's where a lot of the activity are. So they're just extra presence, a uniform presence out there for deterrence. Will they be the ones that will be ticketing if people don't have their Meldrum bar passes or no? No, no, that, that'll actually be us. So if okay. we want, if we want them to take it, we'd have to change the ordinance. Gotcha. Thank you. Mayor. Um, you mentioned that you're going to be up to 20.5 FTE, but this shows 16.5. So what number is it really? 16.5 doesn't include everybody and who's missing? No, it doesn't include everybody because because the other ones are on the levy side. They're all on the levy. Okay. They're on the levy side. So our school resource officer, our canine officer, and our executive assistant um, are on the levy side. Okay. So the salary then increase for 16.5 is 
258,549. Is everybody getting huge raises? Like $15,000 per person? I don't, I don't understand. Can you re-ask that question, please? Um, the increase for salaries between the 2019, 2021 and the proposed is a difference of 258,549 in increase. Is that correct for the same 16.5 FTE? We went most of the previous biennium short one position in there, and I believe we only had budgeted for 19 and a half in the previous biennium where we're coming up to the complete, the full contingent of 20.5 in this biennium. Okay, Yes. even though the FTE count on the bottom it's misleading and because it's, it stays static, the same number. Yes. It does stay static. Uh, the police department is a little bit difficult to follow in that sense. There was not only that position in the previous biennium, but we still have one other position within the levy funds that is an authorized but not budgeted position. So if you look at the levy in combination with this, it comes to a total of 21.5. We have 21.5 positions authorized. Two years ago, we budgeted for 19.5. This year, we're budgeting for 20.5. 20 20.5. Okay, thank you. Yes, Riley. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the the training line item, um, and it's it's you know just about a little over a ten thousand dollar increase from the previous biennium. Mm -hmm. Is that I guess my real question is, is that enough to, to suit your goals on page 37 with, you know, communication and de-escalation? Um, or are there other buckets are you able to pull money from for when these specialized trainings come up? Yeah, I, I think we're going to be fine. I think this is a good training uh, budget you know, based on the number of personnel we have, what we want to try and accomplish. And we have priority set and mapping set in, in our evaluation. So I think we're going to be in good shape. Um, I'll know more. I mean, this was the first budget, first two year budget I went through um, coming up on my first two years. Uh, I think after this budget, I'll, I'll learn a lot more um, yeah. because I was given this first one, which is, which worked out great, but I think we're going to be in good shape. And I appreciate the question though. Yeah, great. Thank you. I have a, um, a curiosity question in regards to, I guess, equipment and um, been a, a discussion over uh, the last several years about uh, maybe dash or uh, body cameras for uh, the officers. Mm -hmm. is, is there anything in this budget uh, related to that? No, there, there is not. Um, we are Clackamas County as a whole are starting to look at body cams um, right now. And so we're gonna be doing a bunch of research over the next year. And we're also gonna try and find grants. It's a very, very expensive program um, to get off the ground, but it's just not the cameras. Obviously, I'm sure Mr. Reisner, you're aware of the storage and, and, the, and the technology that's required for the redacting and, and the full service. So um, we're gonna be looking at that over this next year. Officer uh, Officer Lau is familiar with uh, the technology, and so he's kind of be going to be side by side with me looking at this stuff. So there'll be more of an update probably in a year on what we're doing and how we're doing and what our suggestions are, and then we just got to figure out how we're going to fund that and sustain that. Also, I was curious, uh, following up on uh, the mayor's question about personnel, um, there I know. Uh, other departments have pulled away from uh, TriMet, and uh, is there still thought about maybe uh, getting involved in that uh, program with providing uh, or being involved in the transient uh, police? Not transient, but uh, transit. Yeah, transit police. Thank transit you. Transit police. Yeah, no, I've I've actually shut that down a bit. Um, I know Clackamas County has a transit program that they patrol in, in uh, Clatsop, or not, excuse me, Clackamas County, excuse me. But um, I, we just haven't had the personnel uh, to be able to do this with our new officers in training, et cetera, so. 
Thank you. You bet. Mindy. I just have a question about the juvenile and traffic diversion program. Can you uh, share what that is and share what that is, please? Then I, I might well, have another question. I, 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 I absolutely will. Um, we are partnering with the, uh, the Clackamas County Juvenile Department, specifically Latino Network. And I've worked with Latino Network in the past. They're a very good program. And they're working with our youth in, in the city of Gladstone. So what the diversionary program is, it's, it's very similar to what I like to see out of our school resource officers that we have, program that we have going on. It's about correcting behavior and keeping kids out of the system. It's, it's teaching mentoring and, and, and driving success for our youth rather than just shipping them off into the system, into the juvenile system and letting them get records and so on. So, so the diversion program, we pay $2,500 a year to be a part of that program. Um, and, and so far with, uh, it used to be a, um, a parrot, um, parrot Creek. Par uh, parrot Creek had it, the preview had the contract uh, for the juvenile uh, department the previous year, Latino Network has it now. And it, it, what's great about it is I'm very familiar with Latino Network, so it's a good program. Okay, so I, I just, I feel like sometimes if we pay a little bit more now, we get better results in the future when it comes to kids. And I'm just wondering if something like that doesn't need to be, is that enough? Are we doing enough? Well, um, a, child, also... a child in trouble is a lot cheaper than an adult in trouble. Yes, and, and, I, and I have funding specifically for laid out for working more with the schools and, and developing a stronger presence with Latino Network and the Gladstone School District to make sure kids are staying out of trouble and, and the outreach that goes along with that. So, um, okay. so we're going to be in conversation with that, but I, I think if, if all works out well, we'll continue moving in that strong direction. Okay. I just like to, you know, I, I like to see kids involved in things. Kids involved in things keeps kids off the streets. And I think that that just has to be a complete community effort. And wherever we have to find the money to pay for, we just have to find the money. You know, I'm not sure how or what it looks like, but it, I think it, every year that goes by that we're not paying attention to that, that it, it's not a good thing. Right. That's so why I, that's why I, I, well, I just want to make sure that you're coming, that if, if it gets, if something gets out of whack <laughs> or something's not working, that um, it comes back as quickly as possible so that we can, you know, as a community can go back and relook at things that maybe we need to pull money out of whatever to make sure that we're engaged with every child in our community because this is such a fragile time and we just don't want those kids to get lost. Like I said, a child in trouble is a lot less expensive than an adult in trouble. And it doesn't take long for a child to become an adult. So I wanna make sure that I guess that you know that I personally, and I see a couple of nodding heads that that's something that would be really important to us that doesn't fall through the cracks. Okay. Okay. Great questions and comments. Thank you, everyone. I think we'll go ahead and move on to the fire department for Chief Huffman. <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening. Just in review, the Gladstone Fire Department is staffed by three full-time fire captains and part-time paid on call firefighters. And this is to efficiently and effectively provide emergency services for medical, firefighting, rescue, <clears throat> excuse me, and to assist in other situations to meet the needs of the city and the community. The department is managed by a career fire chief and the training EMS chief. Uh, these chief officers provide administration, training and logistical support for the firefighters while integrating with other city departments like police, public works, et cetera, to make the community a safe place to live and work. Some noteworthy items uh, from 2019 through 21. To meet the adopted standard of cover by the council, 
We stabilized response staffing by having a full-time captain and two paid on call firefighters on duty 24 seven, 365. We obtained office and training classroom space across the street from the fire station. And this rental space was obtained to support administrative and training needs and to prepare the fire station for sleeping quarters, <clears throat> excuse me, for the firefighters. We successfully staffed and responded to disaster and major emergencies from the pandemic, September 2020 fires, and the ice storm recently this past February. We sustained over a year of emergency responses during COVID pandemic conditions, and this is significant due to the fact that we had no major impacts from infection or quarantine on the staffing. In 2021 through 2023, our budget highlights, they're also related to the strategic plan and standard of cover, are reorganizing our staffing to provide consistent administration and operations of the fire department, increased recruitment and retention efforts of paid on call part-time firefighters, complete improvements on the fire station to include crew sleeping quarters. This will help reduce response times and update apparatus replacement plan and replace support vehicles as needed. <clears throat> Page 40 uh, lists our general fund for the fire department. I'd be glad to uh, answer any questions at this time. Yes, Riley. Hi, uh, I'm looking at fire prevention and investigation, um, a decrease of $7,000 from the last biennium. Is that, again, is money being pulled from other buckets to get us back to the 12 or was 12 too much in previous years? No, thank you for that question. That is, is timely in relation to the intergovernmental agreement that we just signed with Clackamas County Fire to provide fire prevention and investigative uh, services. Uh, the line item you're referring to is basically for uh, educational events within the city of Gladstone and okay. to support those materials. Okay, yeah, I, the, you read the line item and it looks big and scary. I was <laughs> like, why aren't we trying to prevent fires? But that makes sense. It, little, it is a little global and, uh, and we'll kind of redefine that like to the police chief's comment. We'll kind of redefine things over the next biennium. But um, uh, one important thing about that question is, is we made sure that we kept the public education within Gladstone and by the Gladstone firefighters uh, and not through the county. Okay, and uh, same, I guess, style of question on physical examinations, just a decrease there I'm not knowing how much these things cost, but I mean, is that enough to to meet the needs? Uh, excellent question, because there were some uh, things we learned in the last biennium. Uh, one was the pandemic really kind of shut us down on our physical exams and it helped us redefine what we need. And we were using some of that line item for recruitment. And I believe uh, the budget um, uh, director can uh, confirm this, that we move some of those costs into HR. So this, this should adequately uh, cover our mandatory respiratory and physical uh, exams for our okay. part-time and full-time. Thank you. And I have one more question that's not specific to the fire department, but before we move on, um, if I can have a go back, that would be great. Sure. Uh, Mindy? I just had two little questions. Once you finish the sleeping quarters inside the fire station, how many people can sleep inside the fire station? Currently with the pandemic conditions, we're gonna to have to put one person in each room, but one of the rooms will uh, be able to hold two uh, after pandemics uh, conditions are, are over. So we're, we're looking at three minimum, which is the minimum staffing for a fire engine and hopefully four whenever we have a training person riding along. Okay, and then, um the uh, lot, there's a couple of lines. I just would like for you to fill, fill us in here. The contractual and professional, that seemed to be almost nothing. Now it's up to $82,000. And then one more, uh, there's a, I understand the reserves for the fire equipment, but why the turnout and the scuba reserves has gone to nothing. Don't, we don't do that anymore. Are we not supporting high rocks? Just overall. Thank you. No, good catches. 
Uh, the contractual and professional jump was due to the uh, IGA with Clackamas for our fire prevention and uh, fire marshal services. Oh, got it. And the um, SCBA and reserve fund was actually expended last biennium uh, to match the grant funds to replace all of our um, self-contained breathing apparatus, which is what that stands for. And those, those usually have a life of about 15 years. So we should be good. Okay, thank you. Great questions. Councillor Hartman, you had a question too? Yes, um, I had a question about the cell phones and pagers, just knowing that I thought that they were all going over to the IT and clarification as to why they're on this in this good, department. No, good catch. Uh, the difference is, is the fire department does still utilize pagers and there are some radios that we use that police do not. So there's some cost incurred there that we had the budget for. I do expect that might change over the next biennium because of the technology is changing, but we still currently use that and had the budget for the pagers and radios. Okay, awesome. And then the second one, just back to what um, uh, having uh, people living in the fire station, even if they're fully vaccinated, you still have, can only have one per room? Uh, actually, I'm sure that'll change with the CDC guidance, and I, I anticipate that as soon as it changes, we'll throw another bed in there. Okay, so. thanks. Like bunk beds? Never works. Okay, now we're going to move on to page 41, the Parks Department, and we'll have Darren cover that. Oh, sorry, Riley. Yeah, uh, Councillor Hartman actually took my cell phone question, but it is, I guess, overall the clarity of IT is getting cell phones at 32 grand, fire still has a budgeted and then police does not. Are we just playing the shell game? Well, that's a term that we try to stay away from usually. <laughs> but um, you know, the cell phones that are within the were were totally within the police department. That has all been moved to technology services, um, information tech. Uh, the amount that is left within the fire department is strictly for pagers and radios. Any cell phone monies that he did have has also been moved to information technology. So one of the things that we'll do in this uh, when we actually incorporate the whole budget is we'll, we'll um, kind of rename some of these categories here. Uh -huh. So we'll have cell phones in one and then show radios pagers in another. Perfect. Thank you. Riley, was that your go back that you asked about? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Darren. Okay. Parks. Um, <clears throat> Noteworthy items, the approval of the Gladstone Nature Park site plan was completed this last biennium. Um, we're working on the uh, implementation of the Meldrum Bar parking fee. If that is passed by council, that will be a large portion of the park's budget. Highlights, creating park maintenance standards. We currently don't have a standard as to what we need to maintain our parks at. And with creation of that, that'll help us set goals and get things done the proper way. Another thing <clears throat> is uh, working on the Meldrum Bar site plan. This was a council goal and also a parks board goal. So we're working with, with the parks board to get that going um, in the near future. A couple of her one light item um, I wanted to point out is the system improvement and projects line item under capital outlay. <clears throat> there's currently <clears throat> there's proposed to have $550,000 in the first year of, of the budget. And I just wanted to talk about what is making up that number. There's a land sale carry forward from last biennium that's going in for a total of 75,000. The parking revenue of 250000 for the first year of the biennium. And then a good neighbor grant, there was a $100,000 carryover from the previous biennium. And that's a $50,000 per year grant that uh, is helping make up that number. Um, and then also the Meldrum Bar site plan is part of that $550,000. For seven hundred and fifty thousand, or for seventy-five thousand dollars, from and that money's coming from the parks SDCs. 
you'll notice in the second half of that, that there's a significant drop in that. Um, what is incorporated in that is the Meldrum Bar site plan, or excuse me, the Meldrum Bar uh, fee station. Um, <clears throat> the reason that dropped from the 250,000 to the 195,000 is because we're looking to add a half an FTE in parks in the second year of the budget, which will make us have two full-time boots on the ground staff in parks. And then also there'll be the uh, $50,000 carryover from the um, Good Neighbor Grant will also be included in that. Any questions? Mindy. Okay, y'all know this is my pet project. Um, a couple of things. Where is the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars going to come from if we don't get that that station going? We have to back out the revenue. If the city council chooses not to implement the parking fee, then we have to back that revenue out of this budget. Okay, and and I guess what if we don't collect two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Again, then we have to make budget adjustments. This is the information that we have best from the consultants that did the fee analysis. Mm -hmm. But again, if we don't collect the full amount mid-year, we're going to have to make an adjustment to back off projects. Well, I just don't think there's enough money there. <laughs> I System improvements and projects, I'm... $250,000 won't even build a new gazebo. And I'm just gonna go back to the fact that the parks and the school are the two reasons that people come to Gladstone. And so in order to get people into the new restaurants that are opening and into our little businesses, we have to get them here. And I think in order to get them here, we have to use our assets and the school is doing their part by renting out their fields, by bringing uh, things that ca they can do in, and we get to mow our lawns. So I guess if that's all we wanna do in our parks, that's just what we're gonna do in our parks. But it's kind of sad to me that we don't put as much money into our biggest asset as other cities do. It's, it just falls by the wayside and it, it's sad to me, it really is. So I'm done. Michael. Jack, I had a question in general about um, general fund revenues that are tied to specific um, department programs. You've indicated, for example, that uh, the transit occupancy tax uh, is tied to uh, some programs in the um, related to tourism and that sort of things. And I assume that if that tax revenue is much smaller than expected, then the expenditures in those kinds of program categories will be smaller than expected. But there are a number of revenues that go into the general fund that just cover all programs across the board. Uh, and if, if those revenues are smaller than expected, um, everybody kind of has to make do on a little bit less. Um, but the parks seem to have a significant number of uh, revenue um, sources that are tied specifically to parks programs. So that if, as uh, Councillor Garlington suggests, uh, the Meldrum Bar parking is not 250,000, but only 150,000. It's not that that 100,000 loss will be spread over uh, police and fire and everything else we do. It's more likely that it will reduce uh, programs related to parks. Um, it, it, and do I have that correct? And are there other revenues that are sort of tied specifically to certain programs. For example, you know, the police are the ones who ticket people and ultimately they get fined. Uh, if the number of fines go down, does police income go or does the police department have to cut its budget too? Um, can, you, can you help me with that? Yeah, I think though what you're saying is correct, but fundamentally the budget committee or city council could 
make a decision that if we don't collect the full revenue for, from the parking fee at Meldrum Bar Park, that they would want the uh, cuts absorbed across the board to all programs. We could do that. We'd have to look at what that would actually do. Um, but typically what you're dealing with is yes, our general fund, everybody wants things and we only have so much money to spread it around. So if we don't get the parking fee revenue, do we lay off a police officer? So yes, if the city council said they wanted uh, the parks not to suffer the full amount of the loss of that, we would have to distribute it across the board and come back and show you what those cuts would look like. Okay, thank you. That's helpful clarification. Yes, Mayor. All right, just two questions. Spray park operations and maintenance is zero. So are we not gonna be doing the spray park? or we just, it's on hold until the COVID regulations change? Right now it's on hold for COVID regulations. We're anticipating to keep it on hold for the next biennium? Uh, basically those, um, re those expenditures have been rolled up more into operations, maintenance and repair. Okay. Uh, there have been several that were isolated. And one of the things the previous public works director did was wanted to, to more or less roll them up into standard categories. Okay, thank you. That's great, because I, I would hate to see that go away. And then portable restroom rentals, are we anticipating that we're not gonna be renting portables up at the nature park or wherever else we have them? I believe- That's another one that got rolled into the o &M number. It did, okay. All right, that was it for me, thank you. Sierra? Hi, yeah, I have two questions. Um, the first, I noticed that we only have uh, 35,000 budgeted for hazardous tree removal, um, which, well, let me take a look. It appears that that is lower than previous years, um, and I'm, or at least uh, 2017 to 2019. Um, it seems like our expenses re uh, relating to hazardous tree removal would be much higher um, considering the damage that we just saw from the ice storm. Or do you guys still feel like that 35K is accurate? Well, that's 35,000 per year for a total of 70,000. Got it, I see. So it's actually an increase, okay. Okay, and then uh, my second question was um, a tourism promotion. I didn't notice any um, subcategories under that um, line item. It, can you eliminate what that what those expenses specifically go to. Are you talking about in the parks budget? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it looks like it's on page 43 um, under recreation expenditures, um, account code um, 510021, tourism promotion activities. And recreation. Oh, I, that is a, as you can see, there are no numbers off to the right-hand side of that. This is a um, category that in, did not uh, was not supposed to be there. I'm okay. sorry to say. No, that, that, that makes more sense. Okay. <laughs> yeah, tourism right. promotion and activities is the only department that has that is in administration. Okay, thank you. Anessa. Thank you. I just had a question for a clarification on what playground aids are and why they, they get $14,000 a year on the recreation expenditures. We have seasonal employees that when we're not in a pandemic, they're helping either at the park for the spray park typically, and that is to offset those part-time costs for the summer months. Got it. Thank you. Councillor Tracy. Thank you. Um, so Councillor Garlington was bringing up a point on the systems improvement and projects. I just want to clarify that you've got a budget here of 799285. So even if we didn't realize the full 250, we're still hovering around, let's say we didn't realize any of the 250, we're still hovering around 550, if I'm not mistaken, on the systems improvements, right? We were talking about $250,000 there to the point where I thought that was becoming the budget line. Um, 
So we still would have that other budget, right? Or yes. the other budgets that have been allocated. Yes. Okay. Second year we yes, in the second year. Right, right. So I, just, just to clarify that, I just want to make sure that there is some money in there. It's not just all. There's money in there to do projects. Right. The good neighbor money. It may not be, I mean, it may not be enough. I understand that. I just wanted to make sure because we were throwing around the $250,000 as though it was the appropriated monies and, and that was it. So thank you for clarification. Mindy. I have one more question. The, the, um, the canopy at Max, not, is it, was it at Max Patterson that we're fixing? Has that been, has, I'm not sure if it's been fixed or not. What did it cost to fix that? Uh, we don't have a, a number as far as what the total is for that. They have not been repaired yet. Uh, we received back the permits from Clackamas County. There was a hiccup in the design. And so we're probably gonna have to go back and get the permits reissued to be able to make those corrections. So can you give us a ballpark figure of how much that fix will be? I, I want to say it was somewhere around $12,000, but I'm not 100% sure. And then what would it have cost to replace it? Do you remember that? I, I don't have that number, no. A, a lot more than that. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm still just going back to the fact that if, if we want people to come to Gladstone, we have to offer something better than what we have in our parks. And that, that doesn't happen with $799,000. I mean, there are cities that put millions of dollars into their park systems in order to keep kids playing ball and um, inviting people to come in and bring in tournaments because they've got little snack shacks and, you know, wedding venues and some place that you can have a, a gathering for your your you know, your mom's birthday party or something. We just don't have any of that. And what good does it do us to go through all of this tourism strategy when we're not offering anything? We're, just, we're not offering. We're not offering anything better than what we've had for 25 years. It, the, the ball fields still look the same as when my son, who is 38 years old, or no, he's 36, played ball 25 years ago. It just hasn't been improved. And two more years now, we're going to go down the road and not give our parks a second look, except to mow the lawn. It just, it's just not cutting it for me. I'm, I'm, Nobody wants anything better for our town. We have great new buildings, but we have hundreds, you know, or not hundreds, we have acres of parks that aren't getting any better. So how are we going to get people to Gladstone? Where's the conversation here? Mayor Stample. Okay, so I guess I need clarification then. So in the 2017-2019 biennium, we put $155,000 towards projects in the parks. 2019 to 2021, we put 68,000 towards projects. And now we're offering 800,000. So I think it's a significant increase. There's other places to get money, but it's not like we're not increasing it. We are increasing it significantly. Is that correct? Yes, do you know what it costs to do a project? Oh, I know how much it costs to do a project, but I'm just saying we're going from 68,000 to 800,000. That's a huge increase. So, I mean, we've got to start somewhere. And there, again, there's other pots of money that we can get to do projects in the park. Well, a couple comments, if I may. The revenue needs to start happening for the parking fee. I think you are going to see an enormous amount in the future budgets of how much could come in from the parking fee revenue. The other piece is that the American Rescue Funds could apply to some things that we want to accomplish in our community, but again, we've got to wait until we get the guidelines on whether or not we can leverage those funds. But with all due respect, what Councilor Garlington is referring to is a fundamental shift in how we provide services. And unless the city council wants to talk about 
reducing services in the fire department, the police department, or administration or elsewhere, there is no more new revenue coming in to support our parks. But this is a lot more revenue than we've had in the last couple of years. And once we start getting that revenue to come in, that is gonna be dedicated solely to the parks and not spread to the other general fund departments. And I believe you, I mean, I, I'm, I, I hear what you're saying, Jackie, I really do. And, and I, I, I just want more for our parks. I just want everybody to wanna to come and, and be in Gladstone, I guess, you know? I want to say this is such a great, fun little town and actually have a flushing toilet. I don't know. Okay, so let's go with Sierra. Uh, just could you clarify when we do get the rescue plan funds, what is the process for allocating those funds? Because, you know, I hear what you're saying as far as that, that could be potential revenue source um, to direct towards the parks. Um, but it would be the timeline wouldn't really line up with the budget committee. So I just don't know how that those funds would be allocated. So in my budget message, I alluded to the fact that when we bring this to the city council in June, we are including the $2.5 million into the budget. But that doesn't mean that we have allocated them yet. We want to make sure we incorporate them in. Once we get the guidelines from the federal government, we plan on having a work session with the city council that could likely be the end of May or the first part of June to publicly talk about what these funds can be used for. But we do know that they have to go towards a community enhancement that'll help people come out of this pandemic. And so parks is one of those that we seem to think fit the criteria and we may recommend that the Parks Advisory Board explore the use of some of those funds. So it'll be a very public, transparent conversation on how we allocate the funds, but we will bring them in as revenue when we bring the budget back to the council to adopt. Riley. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at just the, the FTE counts um, and I agree with Councillor Garlington's uh, overall message is we need more to draw people in. And this may be a conversation beyond this budget, but if you're looking at FTE counts for parks and there's 2.9 people, and then you look at FTE count for recreation and there's nobody, is there a master plan to, to get those numbers up? so that they, there are people to manage these places? This is the start of that plan. And that is why we have built in the FTE into this to help offset the revenues. And regarding the recreation, the only uh, personnel that are hired in there are seasonals or part-time. And as far as in our FTE count, we don't include the seasonals and part-time. It can, it's, it's very difficult to try and convert those to an FTE. Right. So that's why you see nobody over there, but you do see the dollars above for the field maintenance crews and the playground aids. It's, I guess it's more of a strategy question and conversation of, you know, beautiful brand new playgrounds are great or parks are great, but if there's no one to manage it, then what are we, what are we really doing? And I don't expect an answer. There's no, I, that's, I'm just saying it's a part of hopefully a larger conversation yes. for years down the road. It is. That is correct. Councillor Hartman. Thank you. Um, I just, I, you know, I feel Councillor Garlington's compassion and as someone who has young kids, I very much would love to, Meldrum has so much potential, right? Like it has so much potential. But just for like my clarification, like that, we're in that phase, right? Like we need to get a site plan. We can't just go in and start building, right? Like we have to follow the rules. We have to follow the steps. Is that like, so we're in the process, right? That's okay. Correct. So I just wanted to clarify that. So we're not not doing anything. We're moving forward. We're not, you know, I just wanted to say that. Thank you. 
Councillor Todd. Um, I just had a question. I didn't see in that um, projected revenue if we start charging the the field fees and all of that um, since we haven't landed on anything with that on any real level. Do we have a projected amount that that could possibly go into the Parks Department? We have not projected an amount into this budget. So anything that is implemented would be in addition to, it's a very fine line of assuming that fees are going to get implemented. And that's why we wanted to be very clear about the parking fee revenue is we need to implement that in order for this revenue to come in. But your question, no, we have not uh, projected any user fees. Even though the ones that are already in place that we just don't enforce. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have questions on parks? Okay, so we'll go on to the senior center. And uh, in my budget message, I had mentioned that due to the unknown reopening plans that we did eliminate the senior center manager position at this time. Um, before the pandemic, the center offers a variety of recreational classes, meals at center homes, and a transport program to local area residents. In addition, the center staff conducts assessments, information referrals, along with health and wellness information. We are still providing our social services that we are contracted with Clackamas County to provide that. We do still have one services program coordinator and our tram driver that is working at the senior center. I think that kind of gets back to what uh, Riley asked about the whole master vision of the city. And I think the senior center advisory task board has been charged with thinking about what kind of services are we going to provide in our community post pandemic? Are we ever going to be able to go back to having congregate meals? Do we need to look at how we provide services a little bit different for having a younger population incorporated into the senior center? And so I look for all of those conversations to organically develop over the next six months, because right now, there's no timeline on when we're gonna be able to reopen the senior center. The budget is uh, very conservative. As you can see, we, we just put the salaries in there for that. And then until the council decides what to do with the senior center manager position, that money has been held in contingencies. So if there's any questions about the senior center, I'm happy to answer those. Great. And then the last item in general fund will be the library and I will have Kathy touch on that. As Jackie said, this will wrap up the general fund departmental presentations with the library. As you all know, it is now um, under the guidance of Clackamas County. We do contribute 200,000 per year, which has been increased for inflation to 206 and 212, 180. Basically, we say inflation, but it's increased by the percentage that our property taxes go up every year. So these were calculated at 3.5% increase each year. Uh, in future years, as we run through the cycles here, this will eventually disappear. And the contractual and professional service that we have to continue to pay ongoing will be moved over into administration. It won't go away. It will just show in administration. And that takes care of the general fund. So we're moving into public works and, oh, yes, we have questions. Okay. Councillor Hartman. Just a quick uh, clarification on where the uh, fund, the 555,000 for the salaries and associated payroll costs, where those monies have been allocated now. Okay, those uh, funds are no longer allocated mainly because we no longer get library district revenues. As soon as the district transferred to the county, our revenues totally went away. 
So there is no money left. I feel like you answered that and I'm like, duh. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Mindy. Is the money that we have to, um, the building that's sitting there right now, where, where, where are the funds to take care of that, to take it down? What, how is all of that going to work? We're not calling that library or? That library currently is city owned on city okay. property. If uh -huh. it falls, if it falls down right now, we have an agreement with the county that they have to cover costs to keep it operational. Okay. But, but the city council has not made a decision yet on what the future of that building will be, whether or not they want to sell the property, tear it down. So that is a conversation that needs to probably happen in the next year as the new library starts being constructed. So we're not, so uh, our public works department is not taking care of the overall care of the building at this time? That's correct, the county okay. is. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. Okay. How's everybody doing? Want to keep moving forward? Okay, great. So now we're going to go to the very um, riveting part of our presentation, which is our sewer, water, stormwater infrastructure. Uh, so Darren, do you want to start with roads and streets? Yeah. <clears throat> so one of the noteworthy items I wanted to, to mention is the replacement of street signs and street name signs. There was a mandate that came out in 2009 that all street name signs and uh, warning signs needed to be retro reflective. Um, they came back with that in 2012 because there was such a huge expense to get everything replaced that they would push it out and make have everyone have a plan in place. So our plan has been in place and we're currently working on replacing all street name signs and traffic signs to be retro reflective. And you'll notice that when we get to the budget item, you'll see that there's a, a larger increase in that. <clears throat> One of the highlights in the upcoming budget is the annual, annual slurry seal, crack sealing and pavement repairs. This was not done last season because of COVID. Um, again, replacement of street name signs. One of the projects we have is replacement of ADA ramps at various locations. This is part of the county develop, development block grant, also known as the CDBG grant. And then the pedestrian crossing at Webster and Quezon. This is in the uh, street master plan as far as uh, making that a safer intersection for uh, people to cross in that area. <clears throat> One of, uh, one of the line items that I was talking about is um, the street sign maintenance. You can see that that number has gone up significantly from past years. The plan is to replace as many street name signs and street signs within the city as quickly as we possibly can so that we can get the um, federal mandate taken care of uh, sooner than later. Also, uh, there's a sharp increase in the uh, operation of maintenance and repairs. A lot of that is due to um, the ongoing maintenance of streets with the slurry seal and crack sealing. Moving to sewer funds. Um, <clears throat> in 1920, 2020 and 2021, uh, we began, began an inflow and infiltration study uh, and it was brought in, it was, we had to do that for our mutual agreement order with DEQ. What that is, is they, we have gone out, uh, we partner with WES, which is Water Environmental Services, to um, have smoke testing done throughout the city to find out where we're getting water into our sewer system, which is ca causing overflows um, in, into the Clackamas River and also making the uh, sewer treatment plant beyond capacity. Once we get through all this portion of it, we're in the currently in the TVing of all the lines to find out where all the issues are. Once we have that list compiled, we'll then work on fixing those issues. Um, a highlight for the 21-23 budget is um, create line 
<clears throat> create maintenance standards for line cleaning and other um, maintenance activities that are done uh, in the sewer funds. We currently don't have any maintenance standards for water, storm, sanitary. <clears throat> and by doing this, it'll help us with uh, being more proactive instead of reactive. And it'll help cut down on sewer overflows and issues like that. One thing you'll see in the sewer fund and also in the water fund is an uh, FTE split between both of those. That'll help bring us up to uh, help more with all our maintenance activities. And then we're starting to do more projects. We have a West, West Clackamas sewer project that will be starting this summer if passed by council. Uh, that is replacing 300 feet of sewer line that currently um, has what they call a belly and a dip in the pipe, which is restricting flow uh, to the uh, pump station. The, the, budget, the, the budget line items, there's very slight increases throughout, throughout the line items. Pretty, pretty much most of that is due is just inflation increases. The water fund, um, as you know, we implemented the utility rate uh, SDC increase uh, over the last past two years. Some of the highlights is the reservoir cleaning. This is a mandate that has to be done through the Oregon Drinking Water Association. Um, you'll see that the uh, half of FTE that's split with sewer is also in here. And again, creating maintenance standards uh, going forward to help, help with the being more proactive than reactive. <clears throat> The, again, on, in, with this budget and same with the, the storm budget as well, the, um, the line items are pretty much stagnant. There isn't large increases in any of them. And it's, it, we really don't need to do a lot of the increases or increase a lot of these line items. The ones that are, have really um, gone up are obviously the system improvement <coughs> project and projects which is of course because of the utility fees that have gone up um, over the past two years. Moving to stormwater, um, again, maintenance standards. Um, you'll notice that there's a uh, storm line project that's in there that is installing a new storm line that goes from Watts Avenue to Portland Avenue. That's to um, help alleviate the stormwater that's coming from the open space um, over off of Glen Echo. So that'll help transfer that water instead of going straight straight <clears throat> to where it goes now, which is basically behind the, the um, stadium at the high school, we'll be able to transfer water down to Portland Avenue and move it out down Portland Avenue. The, uh, again, the, the, the line items are pretty much stagnant and mirror a lot of the similar funds, uh, similar as the other funds with no large increases. Any questions? Riley. Yeah, I have, and Jackie, you touched on it in the open, but the 400,000 in contingencies, and maybe I'm, I'm making this more complicated than I need to. Is there 400,000 for all of public works or each of these like micro budgets is there are they allocated 400,000? Because if you add it all up, it's 1.4 million. So I guess just for clarity's sake. It is allocated to each budget. Okay. Each, each budget is set up, they're, they're proprietary funds and they're basically their own little businesses, each one. Perfect. So that is where we bring in the, the contingency allocation. Thank you. Great questions. Oh, I have another one. <laughs> um, for all of these contingency funds, are they transferable between these departments? So if road and street gets hit really hard or the sewer fund gets hit really hard? No, they're not transferable between departments. Because uh, as I say, they are their each own individual fund. The roads and street is a special revenue fund. 
the other three are proprietary funds and, and commingling of contingency is not allowed. However, what can happen is there, if there was a significant problem in one fund, they can do interfund loans. And okay. you know, that is one way of being able to more or less move assistance over. Perfect, thank you so much. Mindy. Um, I'm gonna piggyback off of Mr. Hartman because I'm kind of not, so it's, even though it says 400, I'm back to the contingency funds. I, I'm not understanding exactly what that's for and why is it that you've got 400,000, 400,000, but it's not a budget of 800,000. Is it a use it or lose it? No, it's the biannual <coughs> um, uh, method that you do. And in a biennial budget, we don't want to encumber a total of 800,000 for the two year um, in total. We only need to encumber 400,000 per fiscal year. You basically start off with a beginning balance at the first fiscal year, and then you end up with an ending balance at the end of the second fiscal year. And you will note also too, that when it comes to beginning cash, it is not added across. You have the starting cash and that moves over to the um, uh, total biennium for on the fund balance there. It's not added across. You have to look at it as an ongoing fluid uh, revenues minus expenses all the way through. It's, it's, I'm not, it's very, rather difficult to explain. Um, two years ago or th four years ago when the city ex uh, initiated their biennial budget for the first time, those numbers were put all across. So it ends up inflating your available monies to be able to use. And uh, you end up with, uh, uh, you know, basically you're budgeting out money that you do not have. Okay. I'll try to. Yeah. Okay. I'll just say, okay. It's not a shell game. I promise you it's not a shell game. It is the method of by any. We don't, we don't do shell games, no. no. Uh, Chair Milch. I, I think the significant thing to notice on, on uh, this set of uh, budget items uh, is as, a, as distinguished from the general fund, each department listed just the expenditures, just the requirements, the spending. Uh, but the general fund income was all kind of grouped together at the beginning as our total resources. Here you'll notice each budget is headed the fund revenues and expenditures. And if you look at the individual amounts, they balance exactly. They're exactly the same amount for revenues as they are for expenditures, or they actually use the term uh, resources and requirements. So, um, Water bill money pays for the water system, sewer bill money pays for the sewer system and, and the various other resources that come in, but they're all sort of individually balanced. And that's why you don't have, you know, we don't have a one big uh, income item for public works, including all water and sewer and storm, and then somehow get it, uh, you know, improperly allocated between them. Uh, this assures us that uh, each of these uh, parts of our infrastructure system is funded independently and uh, uh, spend it upon independently of one another. They're self-supportive is what they must be. And the overarching principle of governmental accounting is fund accounting such as this. And even with the general fund, if you go back on page 26 and 27, where we show our total balance for revenues, it comes down to 20 million 502074. The next page shows the total departmental expenditures at 20 million 512074. So the general fund is the largest fund, the largest operating fund of the district, and it is a self supportive fund also. And then these other ones are um, subsequently so. Okay, I think we're going to move on to the police levy. Okay. Well, as, as we talked about earlier, sorry about that. As we talked about earlier um, in, the, in the general fund, um, when we talk about FTEs, 
we have our, our, uh, our uh, excuse me, our community services officer, school resource officer and canine officer program out of this along with the executive assistant uh, to the chief. So this is what this program funds. It also funds the, um, the SWAT program, which is, which is minimal uh, cost. However, it's a, it's a very important, very important uh, expertise that we have internally. Um, the whole idea behind that is every few years you get to rotate officers through and gain that extra tactical experience that maybe uh, that is, is a high expense but uh, working more with the team and get that, then that person can come back and train their organization. And as you rotate people through every four to five years. So although it's a longer period of time, you do garner a lot of that expertise. And if you combine that with a lot of the strategies and philosophies that we're doing here at Gladstone, it's, 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 uh, it works out very well. It works out very well. So um, some of the, uh, the budget highlights uh, that we're going to be going for, obviously, is our current SWAT operator is uh, just recently left the team, and so we'll be putting a new one on, uh, and getting that uh, that officer some experience. So we'll be looking at that and continue with our canine officer and the continuing education on advanced training and obedience because um, the canine is obviously a huge could potentially be a huge liability. So the more control we have of a canine the better the officer and the canine working together, the better, um, the more successful they're going to be. So, and of course our school resource officer has got to be probably the most popular officer in our, in our, in our town because everybody knows uh, uh, Officer Eric Graves. Um, he does a very good job in the schools. The school district enjoys having him there and they want to continue that partnership. And, and part of that is all the community engagement and the Gladstone Police Department is big on community engagement as I hope you've seen over the last couple of years. So we're gonna to continue to do that. And once COVID hits, we'll just get bigger. Um, so really that's that's kind of what we're looking at. Uh, there's really no change to that budget uh, outside of maybe some inflation and, and step increases, but uh, any questions regarding that? Great job, Chief. Okay. Chief Huffman, fire levy. <clears throat> With regard to the fire and emergency services levy, um, it was originally approved by the voters in 1998. Uh, and since then it's been renewed every five years with the most recent renewal uh, in 2018. The existing and current levy rate until 2024 is 31 cents per thousand and funds approximately 19.5% of the total Gladstone Fire Department but biennial budget. Uh, the levy budget uh, funds one career training captain uh, plus safety and equipment items for the department. Noteworthy items and budget highlights are listed uh, within the fire department also apply to the levy fund. One uh, interesting uh, part over the last few years is this levy uh, fire training captain position is actually the battalion chief position, and that is an agreement through the collective bargaining agreement with the union to maintain that position as a chief officer. So that's where the funding comes is from the levy. Um, some noteworthy items that we did in the last biennium or current biennium is we replaced an aging fire engine with a state-of-the-art new engine that will serve uh, the community for decades. Uh, just so you know, a fire engine uh, in our community should last at least 20 years. Uh, with the hours and miles that we put on it. So that's a very good investment and we were able to, to pay cash for that, which is really unusual, I think, in, uh, in uh, jurisdictions. And we saved a significant amount of money by paying cash. So that was nice to have that in the um, funds. Uh, for 21-23, the highlights are, uh, we're gonna increase public education for emergency preparedness. And this is what Chief Schmerber and I have been working on is to increase uh, the whole community in emergency preparedness training. Uh, believe it or not, we were talking about that before all of this happened in the last year. So I think we'll, we'll be even more successful because of uh, the references. Um, we also are gonna equip firefighters with additional protective equipment for emergency medical scenes. That scenes of violence, that's one of our goals for the next two years. And we're under a major improvement with our software to match uh, the current soft RMS systems or report management systems from our surrounding agencies and the nation so we can provide data. 
Um, with that, I'll uh, answer any questions. Great job, or, or Chief. Not. Thank yeah. you. Okay, the other funds that we have to go through will be uh, very brief, and Kathy's going to go through those with you, starting with the civic buildings. Yes, the civic buildings capital fund has closed as of June 30th of 2021, or will close with this fiscal year. Uh, we have basically satisfied its purpose as far as building the civic center. So you will see that cycle out over the next uh, couple bienniums. The municipal court fund is an agency fund of the city. And basically what we have to do here is budget what our anticipated um, court fees are coming in and the split as far as how they are distributed out between the city Clackamas County and the state of Oregon. And then the payments back out to all of those respective agencies. So it's, it's uh, strictly a memo fund in that respect. Then the following page is closed funds for historical purposes. And this was a uh, from back in the 2016-17 actual year where we had state shared revenues classified as its own fund versus uh, incorporated into the general fund as it is now. And um, as you can see, this is the last year you will see this presented. And with the next biennium budget, it will have magically disappeared on us because as I say, all revenues are in general fund now. That wraps up all of those. And then we are going to uh, move into the additional information. And one of the things that I did want to uh, highlight to you are the operating transfers in and out. And this is a movement of funds, of uh, monies between the funds to cover the allocation, the cost allocation, excuse me, cost allocation plan that we have been um, uh, briefly touching on all night. And this shows you the schedule of the transfers taken out, going down, and then across the, the funds that the monies go into. These are basically a movement of revenue and expense. And uh, the purpose behind this largely was, as I say, to recover funds into general fund that were um, our, our responsibility citywide, especially into road, sewer, water, storm. And the levy funds also are the ones impacted there and they cover administration department recovery, info technology department recovery, and then also the row revenue payments that we receive in, there's allocations that are made of those, water, sewer, storm pay, a row fee back to streets, and then there's allocations made off of that. And then the public works facility improvements that we have mentioned earlier, we allocate out that 250,000 that we have been budgeting for that amongst roads, water, sewer, and storm again. So a portion of it there. Then the debt service listed at the bottom with Urban Renewal Agency, that is the money that is transferred from Urban Renewal Agency back to the general fund to pay the full faith and credit debt that was issued for the Civic Center. Uh, next page goes into the summary of FTEs. This uh, is based strictly on the first year of the biennium. So if there are any increases showing up in the second year of the biennium, they're not reflected in these counts. This is strictly um, the first year, as I say. We also too have brought in the uh, increases and they, or will be showing the increases in the FTEs in the second year when any new um, positions come on, but you'll see them in the budget detail pages, not in here. They are dependent on the departmental allocations. Many of our positions are charged out percentage wise, 20% to maybe five different departments. So these reflect the actual allocation percentages. So they're a little wonky in that sense. Um, and then one of the big decreases, of course, was the five and a half staff that we lost with the library transfer over to Clackamas County. Was there anything else there, Jackie, that you wanted to mention? Nope, that's good there. We have the salary schedules listed for the non-represented um, employees. And then along with GPA, the new fire 
uh, union and the ASME personnel. The following page is debt service on page 73. As you can see, the city is, is uh, in great shape regarding debt. We have very little. The water refunding note will be paid off within um, uh, just a few more years. And then the general fund 2018 is the debt, the full faith and credit note that was issued for the civic center that goes through 2029. Total debt service by fund is also shown there for uh, the next five years and thereafter. We head then into our financial policies. These are very important to the city. Um, I certainly won't go through all of them right now. The only one that I really do want to point out is on page 78, where we do have the policy of the unrestricted fund balance is the, you know, what it is commit um, the sum of and that it is incumbent upon the city and the general fund to maintain an unrestricted fund balance of at least 10% of fund revenue, which we have been able to achieve um, in the past few years. And again, that is the contingency amount. The contingency amounts that we set out in the enterprise funds and the special revenue funds, those are more just fiscal prudence that we do that. They're not dictated in the financial policies the same way. Um, and then we go into all of the additional information such as budget terms and glossaries. And I would say we're sufficiently done then with that. So are there any other um, questions you may have prior to uh, making, you know, any other questions for wrapping this up? The next step for you would be uh, determining as to whether you want to approve the uh, budget for referral to the city council tonight or if you want to uh, schedule in another meeting on May 17th. All right, any general questions on uh, the, the total budget that has been presented so far? before we move to deliberation on whether to recommend approval. Okay, sometimes uh, city councilors are used to seeing a recommended motion on action that comes before them. We don't have uh, such a motion printed for us tonight. Yes, we uh, do. Oh, we do, I'm sorry. Uh, is, it, is it somewhere later on in the, in the report? It's right in, coming. It's, we're com it's coming. Okay. It's coming up in screen share there. Okay, very good. Oh, that makes it easier. <laughs> and if I may uh, point out, as we had also touched on earlier, this motion is for the total amount of the proposed budget as it shows in here, plus the addition of the American Rescue Plan grant for a revised total. It, it makes um, the mechanics of moving forward to the approved budget a little bit easier if we do bring it into the motion now. Mayor Stemple. I just wanted to say that I'm not going to be voting on the budget. My husband works for the fire department, which is a very teeny weeny piece of this big, huge budget. Um, and it's been challenged in the past, even though the um, ethics commission said it was fine. I, just to make it clean and simple, I'm not going to be voting. Would anyone else uh, on the budget committee uh, like to recuse themselves from voting on this matter because of any other, uh, per, let's, let's call it perceived conflicts? I can't see everyone on the screen, so you'd have to indicate just uh, by coming on by voice. Hearing none, I think we're, we're okay then to proceed. Uh, is there anyone on the budget committee who would like a make, to make the motion uh, that's uh, on the screen before us? I just had a quick question before we proceed. Yes, Commissioner, uh, uh, Councilor Hartman. Um, I just want to clarify the number, you know, it's 2512 2, on the motion, but on the statement in the beginning, it has a $49. So that question, if that should be changed, and then should we be reading it, even though we haven't received formal note that we will be receiving these funds? 
Well, to, to, uh, to answer your first question, as far as the $49, a lot of numbers in here are rounded. So I, we will be able to easily absorb that other $49. And the, as far as official notification of receiving the grant, we have received the um, tentative from the uh, state of Oregon, we've, uh, which was the 251049. It is not the final, we, but we have not received any further information now. Needless to say, if we bring on the grant in the amount of two million five twelve, unless we receive it, there will not a penny be spent. So it's incumbent on receiving the grant before any monies are budgeted or, or allocated out to spend. Awesome, thank you for that. But whoever makes the motion has to read all of that into the record. <laughs> 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 and this is budget law this is yes not, is not we're, we're not trying to be you know uh, uh mean here <laughs> at all uh i will just say right now on my screen um i can't see uh the entire motion, the, the whole thing needs to be moved slightly to the right on my screen in order for me to read it. I don't know how it looks to anyone else. Um, can anyone else read the entire approval motion? Yes, I can read it. You can read it. Would, would someone like to uh, read it then and, and make it as the motion? Do I, I, I'm happy to do that. Do I just read it word for word? Yep. Okay. And is uh, it just the top one or or would we do the second? Oh yeah, that's two separate ones. Let's one at a time then. Okay. Uh, I move that the budget committee of the city of Gladstone approve the biennium budget for the period beginning July 1st, 2021 and ending June, thir June 30th, 2023 in the amount of $53,551,917 plus the addition of $2,512,000 for the rescue American Rescue Plan grant to be included in the General Fund Administration Department for a total of $56,063,917. Thank you, Sierra. Uh, the motion has been made by Sierra Cook. Is there a second? I second. Uh, the motion has been seconded by Riley Hartman. Um, uh, with these meetings, I think it's best to do a roll call vote, but let me ask if there's any further discussion before we take the vote. And I, again, I can't see every person on my screen right now, so someone else will have to uh, call on them. Cammie, can you do the roll call vote? There. Would you All like right, to I'll ask you again, any, any additional discussion before we vote? All right, uh, Tammy Bannock, please call the roll. Randy Ripley. Greg Alexander. Yes. Matt Tracy. Yes. Anessa Hartman. Hi. Tracy Todd. Yes. Mindy Garlington. Yes. Sierra Cook? Yes. Michael Milch? Yes. Riley Hartman? Yes. Neil Reisner? Yes. And that is everyone. Tammy, I couldn't hear every voice. Can you give me a count on the result of the vote? All said yes. Uh, with, one, with one person abstaining? Correct. The mayor okay. Stemple uh, abstained. Okay. So the motion passes. Uh, this is, we approve the budget and send it on to the council for adoption. Additional public hearings uh, will happen at that meeting which is scheduled for uh, June, I believe. Um, and now we need a different motion regarding the tax levy. 
Yes, and I do apologize. They, it is the same exact thing for each fiscal year. However, they do have to be read separately for each fiscal year. It's one of the biennium caveats. Okay. All right. Who would like to do the honors this time? I can do it again. Uh, I move that the budget committee of the city of Gladstone approve property taxes for the 2021-2022 fiscal year at the rate of $4.80, oh my gosh, $4.8174 per thousand of assessed value for the permanent tax levy rate and in the amount of 68 cents for the police levy and 31 cents for the fire levy local option tax rates. And the second one as well. Read the second paragraph as well. Got it. I move that the budget committee of the city of Gladstone approve property taxes for the 2022-2023 fiscal year at the rate of $4.8174 per thousand of assessed value for the permanent tax levy rate and in the amount of 68 cents for the police levy and 31 cents for the fire levy local option tax rates. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Uh, it has been uh, moved by Sierra Cook and seconded by Anessa Hartman. Uh, any further discussion? All right, Tammy Baddock, will you call the roll on this motion, please? Neil Reisner. Neil Reisner. Yes, yes, sorry. Thank you. Riley Hartman. Yes. Michael Milch. Yes. Sierra Cook. Yes. Mindy Garlington. Yes. Tracy Todd. Yes. Anessa Hartman. Yes. Matt Tracy. Yes. Greg Alexander. Yes. Randy Ripley. Yes. All right, once again, it sounds like we have a unanimous vote with one abstention. Um, and so that has passed. And uh, is this an item that also has to be um, acted upon by the city council? Is this yes. is only a, is this a recommendation to them, just for clarification? Yes, it's a, it it is part of the whole overall package that will okay. move to city council. Yes. All right. So the committee has done its job as far as the 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 main city budget, and now we move to the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency budget. Mr. Milch, we yes. we have we have to do the state shared revenue as well. Oh, okay. And you have a motion for that too. Well, we do. We have a script okay. for you. <laughs> well, you came prepared. This is great. We didn't want to be presumptuous, but <laughs> um, before you uh, make the motion on that, though, there, we do have to declare a public hearing on here. All right. Yeah. Is there a motion to open a public hearing for uh, the discussion of the state shared revenues? I'll make a motion to open the public hearing for the state shared revenues. All right. I'll second, second it. All right. It has been moved by uh, Councillor Tracy Todd and seconded by Mayor Stemple to open the public hearing. Uh, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Hearing none, the public hearing is open. Uh, Tammy Bannock, do you have any public testimony related to this matter? I have not received any requests for this, no. Okay, should we do any kind of a report prior to this motion to see if anyone else who is in attendance would like to testify in this matter? We have no other public in attendance here. <laughs> okay, I thought, I thought at the beginning we heard that there were three other people uh, in attendance. Um, no one had requested to speak. 
okay. at this evening for this meeting. All right. Um, so we've given people the opportunity to indicate an interest in uh, testifying this matter. We have no, um, no one has expressed in that interest. So I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, Chairman um, Milch. Yes. We, we do have to make a, a brief staff statement with- Okay, okay, to do that for, then. To Thank satisfy. You. Thank you. There are two public hearings that must be held on these revenues in order to receive them one now and then the other with the adoption of the final budget. And these are estimated by the state. They're based on population formula and are generated by alcohol, cigarette and marijuana taxes, commonly referred to as the sin taxes. We will receive an estimate of 380,350 in FY 21-22 and 403953 in FY 2223. These funds are utilized across the general fund. In roads and streets, they will receive the gas taxes, again estimated by the state, in the amount of 905909 in 2122 and 911642 in FY 2223. These funds are dedicated for use within the roads and streets for maintenance and improvements of the transportation system within Gladstone. And now we would need to request a motion to approve the state shared revenues that will be passed by the budget committee to move to the second public hearing with the city council. I'll make the motion. Is that all right, Michael? That's fine. Is there a second? I'll second. I need to read it first. Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I assume you're going to make the one <laughs> that will be on the screen, but that's right. Let's do it in that okay. order. Thank you. I make a motion. Um, I move that the budget committee of the city of Gladstone approve the use of state shared revenues estimated in the amount of 784,303 for the general fund general purposes and $1,817,551 for the road and street fund maintenance and improvements for the biennium budget for the period beginning July 1st, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2023. All right, we have a motion. Now, do we have a second? I'll second. All right, the motion has been made by Mayor Stemple and seconded by Councillor Tracy Todd. Is there any further discussion? Uh, I didn't hear everyone speak up and I can't see everyone's screen, so I'm going to assume that's a no. So, uh, Tammy Vatic, please call the roll. Randy Ripley. Yes. Greg Alexander. Yes. Matt Tracy. Aye, uh, yes. Vanessa Hartman. Yes. Tracy Todd. Yes. Mindy Garlington. Yes. Sierra Cook. Yes. Michael Milch. Yes. Riley Hartman. Yes. Neil Reisner. Yes. And Mayor St uh, Tammy Stemple. Yes. I believe the motion passed unanimously. So uh, state revenue taxes, uh, this, this moves on again to the city council for final public hearing and final uh, uh, adoption. Okay, uh, now are we ready to move to the Urban Renewal Agency? Um, we need to make a motion to adjourn into the Urban Renewal Budget Committee meeting. Okay, that's right. We are acting as the city budget committee now. All right, good. I'm glad yes. you guys have done this before. Uh, my term on city council didn't coincide with budget at all. So this is my first time. Uh, <laughs> Lots you. of moving around. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn the... Um, I got to look back and see what it's called. The City of Gladstone budget uh, hearing. So moved. And is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, 
All those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed? All right, the motion carried. The city budget hearing is uh, adjourned and now we will call to order the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency uh, budget committee. And I turn it over to staff. Thank you, Chair Milch. I have a quick budget message that I have to read into the record. And so I will do that now. To the Honorable Mayor, members of the Gladstone City Council, citizen members of the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency Budget Committee, and citizens of the City of Gladstone, it is my pleasure to present to you the 2021-23 proposed biennial budget for the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency. The purpose of the agency is to administer the statutory tax increment revenues for funding the goals and objectives of the Gladstone Urban Renewal District Plan through designated projects within the district. In June of 2018, GURA authorized indebtedness for capital projects for the district and approved the 23rd Amendment updating the project descriptions pursuant to resolution number UR65. These authorizations allowed the city to fund construction for a new city hall and police station. As discussed in the City of Gladstone 2021-23 proposed biennium budget, the new Civic Center was completed within schedule and ready for occupancy in April 2020. Furthermore, the project also came in within budget of $13.5 million for construction. All related debt service is provided for out of the GUR revenues through 2029. Looking to the future, Gura will budget for the demolition of the previous city hall building. This will be completed in time for the construction of the Gladstone Public Library on that site as specified in the intergovernmental agreement with Clackamas County. In total, the downtown improvements to the city will contribute significantly to the quality of life for the citizens of Gladstone. Sincerely, myself. So that is the only project that we proposed budgeting for. Yeah. Okay. The only other thing that we did want to point out to you on the Urban Renewal District is that um, the district has a maximum indebtedness authorized of $23,589,427. With the completion of the Civic Center, we have now used 21,307,597 oh, of that maximum indebtedness. Million. Le Can we go with millions? Sorry. Mil yes, thank you. 21 million. Yes, thank you. The maximum indebtedness remaining is 2,281,830. So in essence, the, uh, the urban renewal district will be fully paid or is spent out by the time when that money is is fully spent out, or excuse me, when that is uh, uh, encumbered. The debt service does not go into that money. So this is basically monies that can be used for projects if they are within the urban renewal district. Sufficient funds are available for debt service and transfer to the city's general fund for all future debt service needs within uh, through 2029. And uh, other than that, there really is not too much, but much, too much budgeted out of here at this point in time, other than the demolition of uh, the old city hall, as Jackie had mentioned. That is about all there is to say. I know who wants to make this motion, so this is great. Yes. <laughs> Can I ask one question? Of course. Is the current site of the Gladstone Public Works within the Urban Renewal District? No. Okay. Helpful to know. Because when we're talking about big projects and $2 million left of available to encumber, um, that's something good to know. All right. Um, I, I think someone knew that someone was likely to make this motion. So I will call on, um, uh, let me see. Oh, public comment. Uh, again, we don't have anyone scheduled to do public comment on this. Is that correct? I have not received any requests for public comment. No. All right. Um, and uh, do you want to go into any more detail on the budget itself before we uh, take the motion? I don't think there's a need to. Okay. 
All right, very good. The general report was pretty sufficient and uh, summarized it well. And so uh, you Mindy have the Barling, before you. Chair Milch, Mindy has a question. Okay, thank you. Mindy. Um, it's more of a comment because you had said that there was $2,281 or a little over $2 million left, but it's not really left because we would have to indebt ourselves to have it, correct? No, we have a starting cash balance in the urban renewal district of 2240000 So the- Okay, two, okay. Yeah, so gotcha. we- Yes, but needless to say that 2240000 is also um, uh, inclusive of debt service requirements too. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so you have the numbers before you, and uh, that's a public document that's available to anyone. We don't have to go over it in great detail, but we do need a motion at this time to, um, to recommend approval of the budget. So uh, the motion is on the screen, and anyone who's uh, capable of reading it and would like to make the motion can do so at this time. Are we reading both? Um, the budget approval motion and the tax levy motion or just the top part? We'll do they, each one separately. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, they do have to be separate. I'm sorry to say. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll read the motion individually and vote on it and then go to the next motion. Perfect. I move that the budget committee of the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency approve the biennium budget for the period beginning July 1, 2021 and ending July 30, 2023, in the amount of $4,370,839. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, the motion was made by Riley Hartman and seconded by Mayor Tammy Stemple. Um, let's do a roll call vote. Oh, any further discussion? One quick note is that Mr. Hartman said July 30th, 2023 and not June 30th, 2023. Just to correct that for the record. <laughs> Mr. Thank Hartman, you do, you, that. do you accept that correction? And the second- I do, do I you do. you accept that correction as well? Yes. Okay, all right, let's, uh, so as written here on the screen before us, that's the one we'll do. Uh, if there are any repercussions to that uh, correction, uh, fortunately, they'll all take place within one household uh, this evening. So uh, let's. Uh, so, Tammy Baddock, will you call the roll, please? Neil Reisner. Yes. Riley Hartman. Yes. Michael Milch. Yes. Sierra Cook. Yes. Mindy Garlington. Yes. Tracy Todd? Yes. Vanessa Hartman? Yes. Matt Tracy? Yes. Greg Alexander? Yes. Randy Ripley? Yes. Tammy Stemple? Yes. All right, I believe the, the motion passes unanimously um, and we need a tax levy motion as well. I'll give this another try and see if I can do it without being corrected. <laughs> I move that the budget committee of the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency approve property taxes for the 2021-2022 fiscal year in the levy amount of $377,968. I move that the budget committee of the Gladstone Urban Renewal Agency approve property taxes for the 2022-2023 fiscal year in the levy amount of $391,196. All right, is there a second? 
I will second that. All right, uh, the motion has been made. Uh, the tax levy motions have been made by Riley Hartman and seconded by uh, Councillor Greg Alexander. Uh, Tammy, any, any further discussion? Tammy Bandick, will you please call the roll? Tammy Stemple? Yes. Randy Ripley? Yes. Greg Alexander? Yes. Matt Tracy? Yes. Anessa Hartman? Yes. Tracy Todd? Yes. Mindy Garlington? Yes. Sierra Cook? Yes. Michael Milch? Yes. Riley Hartman? Yes. Neil Reisner? Yes. All right, the motions have been approved unanimously. Uh, I believe that concludes the action required on the Urban Renewal Budget uh, Committee. Um, and before we adjourn, is there anything else uh, from staff uh, that we need that we want to say tonight uh, before we uh, adjourn the meeting? I'd just like to thank everybody for your thoughtful questions and discussion tonight. I think this has really positioned Gladstone to have a, a next couple of great years for us. So thank you very much. Thank you guys for all the work you put in. I, I, I just want to say, uh, you know, it's not always clear how the goals of the city council and uh, the budget process work together. Um, I know that uh, Councillor Garlington would probably like to see a very robust program of recreational uh, programs in our city, housed in our parks and in our uh, current senior center. And I know that uh, Councillor Ripley would probably like to see a streamlining of the fire department administration. And maybe there are councillors who would like to see uh, us explore some reforms in the way we do policing and whether we have some kind of a street response teams as many cities across the country are doing. And these kinds of, of big changes would require major shifts in funding. And the challenge of, of doing this in a public committee that includes both elected officials and private citizens is that uh, we only have limited resources and we have to allocate them in ways that we believe will serve the citizens the best. Uh, but it is primarily the elected officials uh, with input from the public who will have to decide in the future on whether these kinds of changes in, in, in focus and commitments, these sort of pivots that the city could make uh, in the years ahead will happen. Uh, and so um, as we discussed earlier, uh, if, uh, if the council sees the need to go in different directions, the citizens will be involved in that process with you and it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens. But uh, I'm glad we got through tonight. Uh, I appreciate all the uh, preparation from staff, uh, particularly Kathy Brucker. Your work is always uh, very helpful to us and very clear. And uh, the departments have uh, broken things down and answered our questions clearly and, and uh, succinctly tonight. And so uh, that's helpful for this process. Uh, no shell games, uh, no hidden funds. Uh, you're all up front with us and we appreciate that. And we appreciate the work of, uh, of Haley and city staff for putting the, the forms together in a, in a uh, nice, uh, easily readable format too with pictures and other things that highlight some of the great things the city's doing. So um, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? I'll second, second. it. Second. All right, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the meeting is adjourned at 9 11 p.m. on uh, May 3rd, 2021. Thank you all for coming, and uh, we'll see you uh, in June as the City Council hopefully will act on this recommendation. Thank you.